Okay, so Alan, what you got here? This is our mini glow stick, first article for testing the hydrogen tightness. These are swage lock fittings, industry standard, at least in the United States, for gas pipe fittings. They're usually used on stainless steel and copper tubing. In this case, we're fitting a stainless steel cap on and then an aluminum or aluminum ferrule set. And these have tapers built in so that as you tighten the nut, it squeezes the metal down against the inner tube. With a metal tube, it actually crushes the tube and makes a seal. Here, what we're doing is pressure welding the aluminum metal directly onto the aluminum oxide ceramic. And then we have an end cap, which has a matching taper in it that fits on this cone. And so as you tighten the nut down, it squeezes that aluminum with incredible pressure, thousands of pounds per square inch, against the ceramic and forms a seal that's tight enough that you can't pull the fitting off. We've tested the retention up to, uh, I think it was about 80 pounds of force on a little quarter inch tube. But the secret is whether it uh, will hold hydrogen inside. And so how are we gonna test for that? Well, we're putting a little bit of lithium aluminum hydride mixture in the tube. We're gonna seal both ends with these. We've got a little heater coil and a thermocouple, and we'll bring it up to about 250 degrees Celsius. And at that point, the, uh, the Li, ALH4 decomposes, the hydrogen comes out, and it builds up very high pressure inside the space here. And we're gonna put that in something we're inspired putting, yes. by uh, uh, Mr. Par Dr. Parkamov, Dr. aren't we? Dr. Parkamov showed us the way. We're gonna put this inside a glass jar with the cap off, of course. Uh, resting on some of these ceramic supports and we're going to heat it up. If there's any hydrogen leakage, it'll <coughs> collect inside of this glass jar because of the the lip here. But not too much. It's just going to capture much. in the top. Any yeah. any excess is going to come out the end here. So. Yes, and it'll be a nice uh, combustible mixture of hydrogen and, and air. And so if we take a long glowing stick of wood and from a safe distance poke it in there <laughs> and we get a woof then we know we're leaking. Like when you light a stove after the pilot light is off. It, yeah. It hopefully won't be uh, dangerous uh, because there's no pressure buildup. There's nothing confining it, and the glass won't, it won't break. So if we see it burning off, we know the hydrogen is leaked out of here. If we see nothing, then we have a pretty good idea that this is a hydrogen-tight assembly. And then we have some sort of what we call bigger glow sticks here, haven't we? Yeah. And the full-size ones, which are designed to go inside of the dog bone reactor, are a similar construction. We have slightly longer filler rods on the ends. And these are a nice tight fit so that the volume is reduced to the central portion that's inside the heater coil. And we have an outer sheath on it so that the heater coil can get the core up to 1,300 degrees if we need to. And um, so putting this inside the dog bone or running well, no, it by th itself. This one runs by itself. It's, yeah. We have a variant, which is a single end tube, which we're going yeah. to. It's this, the same method of sealing with these swage lock fittings. Yeah. And this end has been uh, sealed in manufacturing. They mold it this way so that we can bury it inside the dog bone. And the hot zone will be here at the core of the dog bone. Uh, and this will be filled by a a blank tube, a longer one. Yeah. So we've got just this much, and in fact, we're going to test this inside of the silicon carbide. And let's go and have a look at that. So that's going to go over here in the silicon carbide element, which uh, is currently running through a ca calibration of sorts. And uh, I think Ryan's moved the Williamson IR onto the hot zone. Yeah. Are we seeing something? We are. It's 1058 in the center of that piece. Nice. But look at the emissivity. That's very curious. The emissivity is very low, and this is a commercial product. And I have a theory now, or a hypothesis, for why that happens. Why is that happening, Ryan? Well, as we saw in our test last night, there is some transparency, and it's been, there's studies to show that too, there's some transparencies in infrared. 
and uh, invisible red, which is where we're at right now. And the guy from Williamson, the tech, when we called up and said, we're getting really low emissivity readings, he thought it was because the fins were cooler at the edge and they were in view. You couldn't get a view of just the hottest spot. So it was taking the hottest spot, but it was taking the average energy from the cooler fins as well. Well, I think the same thing is happening, but because of the transparency, it's actually reading the temperature some number of microns or millimeters inside the alumina, and the outside is being cooled by the air and not emitting as much energy. So it's taking the high temperature and the lower amount of reading and calculating a lower emissivity. And this is uh, because this ceramic is partially transparent at the wavelengths that uh, Williamson is measuring, which is 2 to 6 microns, isn't that right? Yeah. <clears throat> so the internal thermocouple, the B-type internal thermocouple, is currently reading 1,122 degrees C, and the Williamson is seeing 1,058 degrees C.